I'm saying that I imagine this Trevenant's a citrus Trevenant just because most Trevenant are citrus, as opposed to the rest of Chesto. Um, but what are my biggest threats? Charizard Y can be a threat to this team. Just because it knocks out basically three of our Pokemon straight away. Actually, four. Ooh. Trevenant, Klefki, Marilyn, and Diggersby. Ooh. That's pretty rough. Might have to rethink some of that. Charizard Y with Drought. And Solar Beam. Ugh. Alright, hello everybody, this is DKG's Avos. We're battling with a slightly different team today. Slightly different in that I changed two Pokemon. Now I will say that while I was breeding this Trevenant today, uh, he doesn't have speed. He doesn't have the speed IV. So, and it is what it is. I don't think that Trevenant necessarily needs the speed. So I'm not too worried about it, but, I mean, I roll with it. Now, I feel like he was probably predicting the switch on on the Klefki, uh, but based on the Air Slash, I'm assuming that it's probably a special attacker. Probably. It might be a mixed attacker, which would be a little weird, but I've seen weirder things. So, based on all this... I'm switching into Azumarill, because I don't know exactly what to expect. With the Special Attacker, if it's a Solar Beam, there it is. Charizard Y, indeed. If you went for the Solar Beam, predicting the switch, we're kinda screwed. But he went for th Flamethrower, so we should be okay. Alright, now Solar Beam will Oko Azumarill, and we're going to be a little screwed. But we can hope for Parahax, and just go for it anyway. Or we can try and switch out into something like Nidoking, which would be able to help us out with a few different moves. Uh, currently does not have a ground stab move. That's just a weird thing, but... Nidoking currently does not have a ground stab move. So I really don't want to get rid of Azumarill this fast, knowing that Solar Beam is a thing that should be coming. Um, I'd much rather get rid of Nidoking, because he's a slightly weaker attacker. And based on the rest of the team, uh, I feel like Nidoking is probably going to help us out the least. But, but, we still got him around because we like him. Um, water moves are going to help a lot in taking out Nidoking, but he is pretty bulky uh, and does a lot of damage. So if we get burned, that's not a huge deal. Scald hopefully doesn't Oko. We're good, fine, perfect, fantastic. Normally when you see any sort of um, any sort of Vaporeon, they're going to be stupid bulky. They're not going to have a whole lot of special attack. So, I was, felt fairly safe. I was a little on the fence about it. I'm sure you guys could hear that in my voice. I was a little unsure about keeping Nidoking in because it's still a stab water move. If it was Hydro Pump, it would have done a decent chunk more. I would have been far more worried about it. But Scald, I'm not terribly worried because I've got him set up as a special attacker. So, we should be okay. Um, I mean, it was just... It was iffy. I've got a max HP, max special attack. So, he's a bulky special attacker. He does have the Life Orb on him, uh, but there is a little trick that I just learned the other day about Life Orb and Sheer Force, in that if your attacking move has a secondary effect, you won't take Life Orb damage with Sheer Force. So I don't imagine that Vaporeon's going to stay in on this, so I'm going for just a nice stab move in Sludge Bomb. I get he switches in Trevenant here. Um, but it looks like we're not going to be able to take him out. It looks like a special defense wall, and it looks like it is indeed going to be... Oh, God. With the sun, with sun, Trevenant. Oh, man. Harvest every turn. So, 
this is an interesting move that I'm making here. I'm going for Fire Blast, hoping that it hits. We've got the Sun up, which doubles the amount of damage that it's going to do. So that means that it's going to do super effective damage and more damage than Stab. Thankfully, that was the last turn of, of Sunny Day, so we got it off just in time. But I do have Fire Blast on him, so I chose Fire Blast over Sludge Wave because Sunny Day was making it do more damage than Sludge Bomb would have. First of all, it's a stronger attack, so we kind of compensate for the fact that it's non-stab, but we get a better boost out of Sunny Day than we do with Stab, so went for the flame for the Fire Blast straight away. Mmm. Best choice that we had. Alright, so now we've got a dragon coming out. And it's a little interesting not having Earth Power on him. Because you would assume that, hey, everybody, we've scouted three moves on this Nido King. That fourth move has to be Earth Power. But right now I don't have it on there because I've got Earthquake on Trevenant. So I'm trying to go through and figure out, hey, do I really need Earth Power on him or not? So the Yachi Berry is going to help out, try and keep him alive, but I get a crit. Oh, that crit. I feel like that crit made a difference. That crit definitely made a difference. Uh, I don't think Ice Beam would have done enough damage to Oko with that Yachi Berry on there. Uh, so crit hacks, gets him. I feel like Needle King still would have done a decent chunk of damage, but I think it would have been closer to like two-thirds. And so... DD would have helped out with that Haxorus, been able to revenge kill, uh, and then we would have had to set him up and try and take him out with something else. Maybe like Aqua Jet, Azumarill, something like that. We would have been able to take it out, but it does mean that Nido King is still alive. Um, one thing that I will say is that Nido King is underused, but he still has potential in the OU tier, and I think this kind of proves that, that he does have some of that ability to stick around. Uh, now with Nido King out and about, hmm, I have to consider what Boofalant is going to come out with, and I feel like Earthquake's probably one of the biggest threats that he's got. So a normal move or Earthquake, and so I had to switch into Gengar because I wanted to to get that switch on top of it. I didn't want to have there was nothing I wanted to have hit, I mean, if, no. Any normal move that would have been stab and pretty pretty heavy hitter, I had to bring out Gengar to absorb that, or even Trevenant. Trevenant would have helped out, but I chose Gengar over Trevenant at this point. Oh, that's a great predict right there. So now it's going to be Gengar versus Gengar. Opposing Gengar uses Shadow Ball, so he just barely outspeeds me. That's basically a speed tie. I do have an Assault Vest on this Gengar for no apparent reason. But Life Orb Gengar takes out Assault Vest Gengar. The reason that I've got the Assault Vest on Gengar is because I've got my Life Orb on my Nido King. So, I needed to do something. Now, I could have predicted that Shadow Ball and gone straight into, let's say, Diggersby. But I think we'll be okay without Gengar at the moment. So we've already got one opponent's Pokemon that's set up. And I don't think that he's really going to let another Pokemon get set up with Klefki. So I went straight into Swagger instead of T-Wave. Normally I go for T-Wave. Normally I want to set up everything all the time. Everything is paralyzed. Everything gets swept. But, didn't. Didn't go for it. I went for the Swagger Hacks, tried to get something going. Uh, I really want to get this Charizard set up as best as possible. I'm taking a bit of a risk. I don't know if I'm going to be able to survive a Flamethrower, especially with the Sun up. There's no way I, I survive a Flamethrower. I'm hoping that it's going to be paralyzed or confused, but I lose that risk here. Take the risk, sometimes you lose. Uh, unfortunate consequence of playing risky, but we're just going to have to roll with it for now. So 
So now that he is paralyzed, he's either going to take something straight to the face or have to switch out. Now I do have Earthquake, which is really powerful, but doesn't work on Flying or Pokemon with Levitate. Two of the Pokemon that I'm really worried about at the moment. One of them's a Flying type, and one of them has Levitate, so I can't go for that. I've got Rock Slide, which will do four times super effective damage against Charizard. I've also got Quick Attack. Quick Attack will make sure that I do some damage. U-Turn would make it so that I could switch out, but it's not going to be. It's going to be four times resisted by this Charizard. It looks like he's burning out that Charizard because he knows that I can't set up anything else with Paralysis. So he's just going to let it burn out for now and, and just take it. Wants to bring in something else on a safe switch. And I mean, if he's got a, if he brings out Gengar, then that's going to be pretty safe. He's going to have a chance to go for a Focus Blast. Um, he will outspeed Diggersby. Diggersby's not really that quick. Mm. But I'm trying to think of what I expect to come out. I almost expect to see Gengar come out with Focus Blast, but... Looks like he's going to go for Vaporeon. I'm thinking Vaporeon probably outspeeds us, though. It's not paralyzed. I don't want to take Scald straight to the face, but we're going to play Risky. And it looks like he's going for Protect. I went for EQ, thinking that we might outspeed it. Uh, it looks like he's going to get some lefties going. And I don't know if he's going to try and go for the Double Protect. See if he can get it. It's going to be a like a quarter. I think it's one... I think it's 25% chance, I don't think it's 50, but it might be 50% chance that Protect works twice, I don't remember. I just know that it doesn't always work. Protect does not usually work, but it does have a chance to work. But based on the fact that he's taking a little bit of time to decide, I feel like he's probably switching. And he's just trying to figure out if he really wants to switch or if he can really take this much damage with Vaporeon. And so Gengar's coming out because he saw the Earthquake. I'm not going to go for Earthquake again, just because when you know that you've got an opponent that has the ability to resist the moves that you're putting on, try and play a little bit trickier. So I go for that, um, that lovely switch there, just to try and do something. Now Gengar in Gen 5 were paired a lot with Thunderbolt. So there were a lot of T-Bolt Gengar out there. I'm not seeing as many T-Bolt Gengar out there, which is why I feel a little safer going into Maryland. Because normally a T-Bolt Gengar, I mean, it's going to outspeed our Azumarill every time. And a T-Bolt Gengar should, especially with Life Orb, Oko our Azumarill. But I'm seeing a lot more Dazzling Gleam Gengar. Um, he might still have T-Bolt, uh, but he's going for Energy Ball. A little rough. But I don't know what else he's got on him. So we've seen Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball's a, a huge threat to Trevenant here. So we do have to keep that in mind. Big risk that we're taking keeping in Trevenant. But I feel like he's going to be bulky enough to take it. But he's not. Oh, no, Trevenant. I wanted you to stay. But we're giving him some life orb damage, which is another thing that we're going to be able to do here. Um, it's It was a calculated risk. With the life orb damage, I knew that Gengar won't be able to live that long. And I know that he can't use T-Bolt even if he's got it against Nido King, so we're good there. His best move is going to be that Shadow Ball. So we should be okay. Nido King should survive a, a Shadow Ball, no problem. Whatever is going to happen, Gengar's out of here. No problemo. We're not going to. We're not really leaving Nido King out against a Shadow Ball from Gengar. I'm predicting a Shadow Ball.
predict the shadow ball. It really doesn't do anything, I've just stalled a turn. I'll be honest. Nothing. Now, had I done that with uh, with our Trevenant, we would have been alright, but you can see here that uh, we were bulky enough to take that energy ball with Diggersby. I figure that Diggersby is alright with an energy ball. One energy ball is going to be okay. Uh, Azumarill's not quite as bulky. And he'd already lost some HP. So... We've got Diggers V out and about, we still have Nido King. I really didn't want to take that Shadow Ball to Nido King, because I want to test out Nido King a little bit, see what's going on with him. Alright, so now we, we know that he's got Earthquake, we know that he's able to do a decent chunk of damage. He should be faster than us. Hmm. I really don't know that much about Boofalin's speed. So... Not really wanting to take a huge amount of risk and be outsped. I'm just going to go for some quick attack, get some sort of damage in there. So if he had some sort of focus sash something, that we've at least broken that. I don't play against Boofalint that much. I'm a little disappointed Trevenant couldn't survive that. I really wanted him to. I want him to. Uh, Trevenant... I built as a defensive wall. Uh, I really, yeah, I did that. It was stupid, but it was a, it was a test. I wanted to see if Trevenant could do it. Trevenant couldn't. Uh, Needle King out of here. GG. All right. So what did we learn from that battle? Trevenant can't survive. A life orb shadow ball from Gengar. Oops.